Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Hart uh, Publications. Um, Hart Publishing is part of the uh, Bloomsbury uh, Publishing PLC group. Um, this book is called English Legal Histories and it's been written by Professor Ian Ward. It's available as a paperback, which is this version here, a PDF and an e-book. Um, I thought this book was really interesting to have a look at, um, and I wasn't disappointed. It's actually a detailed book, uh, very high quality, a lot of research, and I was really impressed with it. I've given the title for our book review this, A Curious Innovative Approach to Legal History with an Intellectual Sparkle for the Curious Reader. Notice I've used the word curious twice just to ram the thing home because it is a curiosity in many ways. Let's have a look at the book first of all. It's a paperback. There it is there. And there's the spine. And then there's the back. There's quite a lot of uh, stuff um, actually in f photographs and various other things. You can see photographs in the book itself. Um, it runs all the way through, and I'll tell you a little bit about the book in a minute. You can see there are lots of illustrations. At the back there is a, a useful index by page numbering, so you should be able to find what you're looking for quite quickly. And it's quite a detailed index as well, which uh, won't disappoint. There we go, because this is a very meticulous book, this. Then a list of references that have been used, an alphabetic list of references and uh, then we get to the end of the book. There's the list of references there. Then we get to the book itself, the end of the book there. You can see um, it's body copied basically and you've got some footnoting. And if we go to the front of the book, there's the blurb. I've borrowed a bit of the blurb for the review. There's the front page there. Then that's the detail about heart. These are all the credits because there are a lot of images that have been used, which makes the book actually quite interesting because it, it is a bit of a heavy book. But I liked it. I mean, I've always been interested in uh, legal history and uh, the links that we have with uh, legal history um, and history itself. Because I do think, a lot, I mean, I've, a lot of people have criticised me for this, I have to say, but I believe that you've got to look at the time in which the decisions are made because people change, attitudes change. In the 50 years I've been involved studying law and practicing law, on and off, doing other things, uh, I have seen a tremendous change from the late 60s to 2020. Here is the uh, book anyway, it's structured in three, uh, three parts I think. Yes, three parts. Part one starts in 1613, part two starts in 1765, part three 1887, and that it looks at um, in 87. It looks. It starts by talking about England at that particular date. That gives you the the relevance, and then it, it then goes on and looks at some of the major areas. Obviously, property law and criminal law being big areas. Now, there's the table of cases. Not too many cases, but a few. Just a splattering of cases. Some statutes, of course, as well. The usual, the usual ones are there. Um, and they hasten to add. Then you've got uh, an introduction, which I shall mention in a minute. You see a little picture there of Gregorio Letti, who I'll mention in a minute. And then you've got, uh, that's the introduction. Do read the introduction because it actually helps in critical histories and it runs through. Um, and it gives us, I've mentioned, a very interesting person who may not be known to you, a troublesome lawyer it's called, and mentioned William Prynne. And he's a member, as he was a member, as I am, of Lincoln's Inn. Um, that was on page uh, 132, and I'm not going to give anything away, but look at Mr. Prynne, P -R, it's, it's spelt um, P-R-Y-N-N-E, and you'll find out what happened to him. It's not a particularly nice story, and I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I think sure many people will know who William Prynne is. I visited his house as well, so... Uh, I did find it quite interesting. So what do we say about the book? We say this book on English legal histories has been written by Professor Ian Ward of Newcastle University. He's a law professor. It's well described um, as another exciting and, and innovative approach to the study of English law. And that's exactly what you get here, because this is not a book, this is not a book that 
probably will be on the main syllabus in that respect in those respects but it certainly gives you a great flavor of a spread of a few hundred years of what's happened to English legal history. We feel that it will be of special interest to actually quite a wide range of readers, not confined merely to lawyers. I think historians will find this fascinating too, although it is specific and really for the law. It's not the same as studying, say, Professor Baker's um, history of English law or something like that. It's, it's different from that, and that's why I call it rather curious, but I liked it. Um, it's got 15 chapters, split into three parts, beginning with England in 1615. Then it concludes with 1887 property law, spanning about nearly 300 years. So do read the introduction at the beginning, which will give the reader a flavour of the author's approach. And it begins with an apocryphal story of Gregorio Letty, photographed in the first page, uh, concerning King Charles II, who liked Letty for his good conversation. The king heard that Letty was to write a history of the English court and wished to give him some words of advice. Apparently, the king commented, be careful not to cause too much offence. Letty replied, saying it was very difficult because it would take the wisdom of King Solomon to write a history that did not, in the end, manage to offend someone somewhere. Well, it's a bit like being a politician with COVID-19, isn't it, if you think about it? Because the problem is, whatever you say, there can be some people who don't want to hear it and don't like what you're saying. Nevertheless, the reported response from Charles II observed that Solomon had, quote, the wisdom to write in parables. To complete the story, of course, Letty did cause offence, what a surprise, with what are described as his anecdotes of life at the English court. Ward concludes writing that Letty, rightly sensing that he might be overstaying his welcome in England, uh, left for Amsterdam. And the author gives us here the flavour of his book, which I think is brilliantly researched throughout, and we found it entertaining in what I describe as a rather a droll way. Throughout, of course, Ward has written English legal histories with an accessible writing style, so it's easy to read, which is designed for both the student and a broader, a broader audience. And I think researchers will find this helpful too. He takes us beyond the narrower confines of legal doctrines and cases and invites them to consider the myriad contexts within which English law has been shaped. And of substantial interest to historians is the author's social review of the politics, the economics, the art and the poetry within the history of law itself, as he puts it, which is rather rather a grand way of putting but rather nice. He covers a period from the Reformation through to the Age of Reform, relating its stories as the histories of English law, which will be of great interest, I say, to lawyers and historians alike. And of course, the, the period has been chosen because there were quite a large number of things happening during that particular time. And we, we're coming slap bang up to date, but nothing, nothing near the approach of the the statutes and the huge changes in the 20th century, which of course he's left out because that's uh, <coughs> that's a bit too <coughs> perhaps a bit too modern, really a bit too new. Let me conclude by saying this: the content covers these areas, depending on what you're looking for: <coughs> histories of the constitution and government, crimes and contracts, tort and trespass. Um, obviously, trespass is part of tort, but trespass is a specific area within tort for these purposes property and equity, to name but a few. And of course, property is very much one of the cornerstones. And of the people who made that law, he was those who wrote it, he covers, and those who suffered it, uh, Prynne, for instance. Legal history is, in the end, a human story of justice and of injustice, of success and failure, good luck and bad. And of course, that is what you get. Uh, history is not for everybody, but I do find it, of course, being a lawyer, I find history very interesting. As a politician, I also found it interesting, even though sometimes you don't quite get what you want. He also declares, his Professor Ward, that the law is full of statutes and instruments, case law and the role of precedent, but it is a history which is full of people and peculiarity. I like that because the human touch which you see in the law of tort is actually makes it easier to teach and property law can be very boring. But once you get into the some of the cases, tenants, uh, tenancies, that sort of thing, you can see the human face coming into it, which is what, of course, makes this work 
so endlessly fascinating. So thank you very much, Ian. The publication date of the paperback edition is cited as at the 9th of January 2020. It's available as an e-book, and I'm recording this in May 2020. So the spring is just here. Well, there's a bit overcast today. There is the um, book again, paperback, spine, and then you've got the blurb on the back. And then just opening it in the middle, um, William Allen. There we go. Contracts and Markets. So a lot of detail here. I, I don't think this is a book that um, would be for someone who has limited knowledge. I think you, you need to have some knowledge of law. He's looking at Blackstone and, and the rise of the contract. And he refers, again, in this, in this book, he refers to people like uh, Attire and uh, the rise and fall of the freedom of contract. And he has quite a large number of very substantial references which help. You've also got um, Lansdowne House mentioned there, for instance. There's another um, picture. And a lot of, there's a lot of very interesting uh, information. And then Charles Dickens. See, you can't escape Dickens. But there we go. Thank you very much to Professor Ward, to everybody who's been involved in this publication. I'm very grateful to um, Hart for sending it to me for review and I do have a look at our reviews and any, any of the other stuff we put in the journals and on the web. In the meantime, thank you very much. Bye bye.